Hey guys, Zero Gaming here. Welcome back to our Subnautica series. Um, in the last episode, if you've been following along, we continued um, work on our habitat. <clears throat> I also had gathered the supplies for the sea moth, and um, I showed you guys around a little bit. Um, I did a little bit of messing around with the sea moth. It's a pretty sweet little vehicle. It definitely does run on power, so um, I went ahead and I created some more power cells to stick in my inventory because I don't want to run out. Um, as I explained in the last episode, that I went to an alien facility and I contracted some kind of bacterial infection. Now, I'm not sure what this bacterial infection does, but I'm pretty sure that it needs to be cured or else I'm going to die. So in this episode, we're going to use the sea moth, put it to the test. Um, as you can see, i got my extra power here. We're going to uh, go to the different beacon points, and I can actually show you this alien facility. Um, I'm not sure if that's where I need to go to cure myself, but we are going to do our best to find out today. So I'm just going to grab the radio has a message. Let's see what it says. Two six seven nine. Two six seven nine. So let's try to remember that. Let's go to our voice log. It's there in two six seven nine. Beacon points, make sure they're all available. We're gonna try to hit all these beacons today. Alright, let's get on our way. Let's enjoy the journey. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is get my sea moth. Power up this baby. So awesome. Let's go to point number one. I already went to life pod number 17 um, in a previous journey. And I just kind of want to see if I missed anything as far as scanning goes. As you can see, the water's really green. I'm not sure if that's from bacterial infection or what that's actually from. But I'm going to go to each one of these places and do a couple rescans to see if I missed anything. Maybe collect some stuff along the way. Sea moth fragments. So, this is actually the stuff that I, I looked at to build the sea moth. There's a bunch of them that are scannable along the way. And obviously, I don't need to scan them anymore, but I will at the same time look for valuable materials and for anything I lost. So, let's get out the scanner here, see if there's anything important that I missed. And this does let me scan, so I might as well just do it anyway. Get some minerals out of that. The hatch is broken, so I don't see anything of an importance on this beacon. So let's go ahead and go to our beacon menu. And we'll turn this one off, I believe. This is 17, correct? Yes. That way it doesn't show up on the map anymore and confuse us. All right, let's get on to the next beacon. Although over here it does look like there's a whole bunch of stuff. Let's 
This looks like a shipwreck, if I'm not mistaken. Let's get out and explore a little bit while we're here. What is that? Something always trying to eat me in this game. Get out of here, bro. Try to eat me. I don't really see a way into this vessel. I'm not even really sure what this vessel is. See some flashing lights there from the crash. Let's go on down here, see if we can find anything of value. Any scans. It's metal savage. Don't need that. Don't really think that there's anything of value in here. You never know though unless you check it out. And the bad part is, if you do end up missing something, then you just gotta go back and. This looks like it might be a way in, no? No, nothing there. Anything up here? So this just looks like a shipwreck, so we might as well continue on. We've got more important fish to fry, like healing myself. Welcome aboard, Captain. Let's see where that next transmission is. This thing is so super awesome. doesn't lose power that quick either which is um, pretty awesome because the sea glider kind of loses power fairly quickly as you can see I've been going for a while at least a thousand meters already and it's only down six percent seven percent now as you can see by the meter marker it moves super quick so I think it can pretty much just run right through animals. Oh, sounds like that thing took a dump on me. Here we have Life Pod 3. I'm not sure, did I ever explore this one? Yeah, I believe I did, but let's get out and give her another go. See if I missed anything. This one looks like it still has power. And this it had a PDA, I remember. And it doesn't look like I missed anything here. It's not giving me the option to... Let's get out our scanner just to make sure. Take a little look around. I don't believe there's anything here either for me to heal myself, so... I think I see some salt here. don't need salt. I've got plenty of salt. All right, so let's check our menu, beacon menu. This is number three, so we can turn off number three. Now we just have number 13 to get to. Life pod 13. Let's turn this one to yellow so that it shows up. And this one shows that it's pretty far away, so. Well, actually, it's only not that far. Seamoth really makes quick work of all these journeys. You don't have to worry about oxygen, or you don't really have to worry about the creatures, like, coming after you. I mean, I guess you do, because there's definitely a... Um, little damage thing on there next to the power it says 88 percent now and that's just for me crashing into creatures I'm hoping when that gets down far enough that we can just use our repair tool to fix it I 
I haven't exactly tested the depth of these yet, but I'm assuming they can probably go down pretty far. Looks like you do have to be kind of careful when you're navigating not to hit things because it appears as that makes your damage go down. And I don't think that I have been to Life Pod 13 yet. I'm not sure of what our depth is, it's 178, so. We need to go ahead and in our inventory. Okay, we got the rebreather on, so. Remember, there's two types of helmets. There's the radioactive one and the rebreather one. The rebreather one lets you use oxygen better at deeper deeper levels. So I do not see anything in this life pod. Which either means I've already visited it, or there's just nothing there. Okay, so I do remember that to the north, this is the south, so to the north, about, it was a ways away. There was an island. I'm going to try to show you this alien facility now. Because it's definitely the place that I got infected. I'm not sure if it's the same place that I need to go to heal myself. But we are going to take a look. I don't remember it being this far, so we might not be in the right area. But I did just see that we received another, how far are we? Yeah, it was about this far. Let's give this thing a depth test real quick. So this thing can definitely travel down quite a ways. We're at like 200 meters now. Okay, so it can only go to 200. As you can see, I dropped off a lot of pressure there. Not pressure, but Assuming we're going to have to repair this at some point. So I have not tested to see if this vessel is radiation proof. But I'm just assuming that it is. So right now I am on my way back to any radio. It really doesn't matter which one I get to. Saw that I received another transmission and I really want to heal myself because I've really gone through a lot and I don't want to get to a point in this game where 
it's saved and the only thing it's saved on is me about to die so because there's really no way out of that scenario so I really just want to take the preemptive steps to get myself healed up looks like I'm stuck here As you can see, we've gone quite a far ways, and we're still at eighty percent battery. So, just a couple power cells. You can go pretty far, I'm guessing. You can see that this water around here is all green now. I guess that's the bacteria that's leaking into the water that they keep warning you about. Alright, let's exit. One thing I want to test real quick is whether or not we can go ahead and use the repair tool on this to kind of fix it up. And you can, that's exactly how you fix it without entering it. And it doesn't seem to want to work. So that's rather convenient right there. Life pod 19. Alright, so let's see where our new signal transmission is. Life pod 19 is right there. 13 we took care of. That one we took care of, so we're looking for life pod 19. I'm not sure that this is going to get us any closer to being healed, but you might as well follow the storyline. As you can see, I'm back up to 100% uh, health here. Got a really cool light on this too, which is pretty awesome. Guessing this is down in depths because that right there is a big pile of quartz. So this might be too far down for my Seamoth to go. I think we're just about reaching the depths of what my Seamoth can do. So I might have to get out here. Don't see where the beacon went. The beacon.
Skinner's down there, so it must have fallen even farther down there. So now I have to make a decision. I'm not sure that I want to go swimming out in the cold, so. Not even the cold, the darkness. I'm not sure when the darkness will submit, so. Let's get this down to maximum level. Leave my lights on and go for a little swim. Okay, so there's a door. Not sure that we're going to be able to reach this, but we're going to give it a go. Quartz is super valuable. You need quartz for building windows and reinforcing things, and the more I can grab here, the better, because it's not exactly the easiest to find. Let's see what we got here. High capacity tank. You got a PDA. Let's use our sea glider here. Alright, we gotta go get some more oxygen real quick. I'm not gonna make it. Somewhere down here, if I remember correctly. Just gonna have to wait till morning. Hopefully, morning is coming soon. Look how beautiful the graphics are in this game. I mean, it literally looks like you are underwater. Just amazing, amazing job. The open world concept and the way they designed the map, it's just truly spectacular. I think we can get down a little bit deeper here. That's the farthest we're going to get. Let's leave our lights on and see if we can dive back down there. Fortunately, I don't have a flashlight and my sea glider light is out, so... kind of wanted to just give it a minute to see if the sunlight would come back up. It looks like it's becoming daytime now. Getting a little bit brighter. Let's take a look up. And it looks like the sunlight's coming. Alright, so let's see if we can dive down in here and see what's going on. I don't see a way into this one. So it might not be accessible from the outside. Got a really 
really dark again all of a sudden. Definitely looks like there's a PDA in there though. I'm not sure how to get in at this point though. So I don't think that this is going to let me in, unfortunately. So let's get up to our CMOS and see what the new PDA says. Maybe some valuable information about this disease that we contracted. Let's see what she says. And this one's 19, right? That's a fall in 30 seconds, Cap. Okay, so before they lost communication, Dutch uploaded a set of blueprints to the attorney's main computer. There's a high security terminal inside the captain's quarters located behind the prawn bay in which the blueprints should be accessible. Looks like we missed that one. One kilometer southwest of the sterns. Okay, so it looks like we've got to do some exploring of the Aurora. So in our next episode, we're going to be back at the Aurora, see what we can find out, see if we can get ourselves cured. Thanks for watching, guys. If you are liking this series and following along with our journey, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We're going to have lots of more videos coming. See you guys soon.